Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So we are in the series that is based upon computer architecture, which is an important course in the computer science and engineering uh, degree. So we will be discussing about or we will be discussing the important instructions of a very popular instruction set, which is called MIPS or MIPS architecture, right? So what is MIPS architecture? MIPS architecture is basically um, basically the microprocessors without interlock pipeline stages okay we'll understand what that is so this is one of the popular architectures or one of the popular instruction sets in the in the risk kind of uh, in the risk kind of instruction sets so basically the full form of this is rest re, uh, reduced instruction set architecture reduced instruction set computer okay that is the full form of risk this has fewer number of instructions so i hope what you uh, what i hope you know what i mean by uh, instruction set instruction set is basically the set of instructions that we use to write the code that are inbuilt in the architecture so you may have addition, subtraction and a few other instructions that are by default there. So for example, if an instruction set has only addition and subtraction, then multiplication and division, you may have to derive from these instructions alone, right? So that is what in an instruction set is. Now, risk is one kind of architecture where we have reduced in, which is called as reduced instruction set computer. This basically has relatively lesser number of instructions okay lesser number of instructions total so we have about uh, 50 instructions in risk architectures most of the uh, instructions are basic okay and uh, the instruction length is always fixed okay fixed length instructions and we have a few more such features okay the number of registers is also large Okay, so these are the basic uh, qualities of a risk, risk architecture and MIPS. MIPS is a popular, very, very popular example of the risk architecture. Today, we will be discussing the most popular instructions that are there in the MIPS architecture. Okay, or the MIPS instruction set. Okay, so let's get started with that. And once that is done in the next video we will be discussing how we can convert a c code a code that is written in c programming language to the mips architecture or the mips instruction set so mips is basically the computer or the lower level uh, language in which we can write our codes right so let's go ahead and discuss the instructions of mips okay mips instruction set okay so the first one first one is to add two numbers okay so let us say we have three registers i hope you know what registers are registers are basically the the uh, modules of your hardware where you can store the data right so that is where you store your data okay so now we are going deeper your c in c language how would you write in c language uh, you will declare the variables and you will uh, just uh, write for example you have variable a and you want to add b and c so what will you do a is equal to b plus c this is how you declare in c right now what happens in the internally what happens internally or what happens in the lower level is what we are going to see now how we are going to write instructions for that for uh, the lower level architecture what happens after uh, once this code is gone into the next level what happens there so that is what we are going to see today uh, the lower level architecture so the first instruction is addition okay in c what you write you write b plus c is a is equal to b plus c in mips architecture you write add r1 r2 and r3 okay so whatever is there in r2 and r3 those two numbers will be added and they will be deposited in r1 
so essentially this is basically what this is is r1 is equal to r2 plus r3 so the registers r1 and r2 whatever variable uh, values are there in those uh, registers they will be added and the result will be placed in uh, register number one okay so this is your addition uh the second one or the second instruction is basically as you already know it is subtraction so it is very similar to addition what we do is sub sub stands for subtract r1 comma r2 comma r3 so essentially this basically is r1 is equal to r2 minus r3 okay next the next one again as you would know will be that we are going for multiplication multiplication is what multiplication is would think that it would be mul r1 r2 r3 right but that's not actually true what we write here is you write you write just the two numbers that you want to multiply so you write mul r2 comma r3 now you have two registers which are known as high and low okay so high comma low will have the actual value so high and low if you take the registers together if high and low uh, registers you take them together those will contain your uh contain the multiplication or the product of the two numbers right so similarly uh now we are finished with three instructions here now moving to the next instruction it is basically add immediate what is add immediate add immediate it basically instead of taking the value of a register you will directly give in the value so the fourth instruction that we are looking at is add immediate okay so the syntax is a d d i r 1 r 2 let's say 10 okay so this is your instruction now what does this do this adds the values of r 2 and 10 and it replaces it in r 1 okay so this is your add immediate function then the next one is again uh, division so for fifth one is divide division is basically div of r1 r2 just like multiplication high low high comma low will be the uh, values of your division so the quotient the quotient is stored in low and your remainder your remainder is stored in your high high register okay so this is how the division data is stored in your registers once the div instruction is run now next we have our logical operators so the logical operators are basically uh, okay this is the sixth one so our logical operators are basically and or and all these so this is very similar to add so you give and r1 r2 r3 so and operation is done between r2 and r3 and the result is stored in r1 similarly you have your or operation in or also we store r2 or r3 in r1 then again we have and immediate just like add immediate you have and immediate which means that let's say r1 r2 comma 1 so r2 comma r2 and 1 will be stored in r1 right next uh, next we have our shift operators that is you have your left shift operator okay which is basically sll r1 comma r2 comma 7 let's say that is basically r1 is equal to r2 left shift 7 uh, so shift left okay this is s okay the next one is shift right logical shift right logical srl r1 comma r2 comma 9 
that is basically r1 is equal to r2 right shift 9 shift right okay next next this is a very important instruction especially when you write codes right the very important instruction which is store word and load word these are two instructions let's first discuss load word load word basically when you give this command load word r1 comma 145 of r2 what does this do what this does is r1 okay what this does is r1 is equal to memory of that is whatever is there in the memory address of the number r2 plus 145 so r2 will uh, register 2 will have a value if you add 142 145 to that you will get an address right now at that address of the memory whatever number is present or whatever value is present that value is placed inside the register r1 okay so this is how that works now the next one is store word store word is the exact opposite of load word so store word is sw r1 comma 145 of r2 what this does is uh, the value whatever is there in r1 right that is taken and it is stored in the address of r2 plus 145 so r2 has a number the register r2 has a number that is added with 145 and whatever 145 whatever the sum of these two numbers whatever is there in that address that is emptied out and whatever is there in r1 is placed in that address of the memory okay so this number you can place you can put anything here of course this is just an example 145 is just an example you can give one two three any any natural number okay so this is uh yeah so this is these are to the two instructions that are again important now we have uh, another important uh, set of instructions these are basically your if else statements so in your c and your other programming languages you have if else uh, uh, conditions right so basically for those purposes we have a few instructions so the first thing is called branch on equal okay so if you give two registers and if okay let me just first write down the instruction it's b o q b o e uh, sorry 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 it's b e q which stands for branch on equal okay b e q uh, r1 r2 uh, i'm using 145 everywhere so let's say 145 now what does this do if you write in c language what this does is if r1 is equal to r2 then we go to the ad uh, we go to the instruction that is present in we go to the instruction that is present in you know the program counter right program counter stores the address for the next instruction so the pc will become pc plus 4 plus 145 into 4 so this becomes a new value of the program counter which is the next instruction now similarly you have branch on not equal so if your two registers are not equal then we go into the uh, next uh, next instruction that is the instruction that is there in this address okay so let me just write that it's b n e q that is branching or not equal right so if r1 you say r1 r2 145 so if r1 is not equal to r2 then we go to
this address and whatever instruction is there that will become the next instruction okay now the next instruction that we have is set set on less than this is basically a boolean uh, value okay so what we do is sl set less than r1 slt sorry slt set less than r1 r2 and r3 okay now what this does is if r2 is less than r3 then r1 is assigned the value of, and r1 is assigned the value of 1 else else r1 is equal to 0 so this is the function of set on less than okay the next instruction that we have is uh, jump okay we have the jump instruction which is basically j let's say 145 so what we do is we directly go to the address or the next instruction directly becomes the address or directly becomes the instruction that is present in the address that we give after the after the j so jump is basically j okay so jump is uh, j is stands for jump so we directly jump to the instruction that is present in the address of 145 okay direct jump now next one is jump register what this does is so let's say i'm giving j31 so we directly jump to the instruction that is there in register 31 or the data that is there in register 31 jump to register so that's all i had for this video these are the important instructions of the mips architecture i hope you got to learn something from this video and if you did please do like share and subscribe that really motivates me and thank you guys for watching see you in the next video in the next video we will be taking an interesting problem we'll first write the c code to that problem the c programming language code for that problem and then we'll convert the c code into the mips architecture code so that is going to be very interesting so let's go ahead and do that in the next video and stay tuned for that video and thank you guys for watching